Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about CLAPC, that is Central Line Associated Bloodstream Infections. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. Now, what is Central Venous Catheter? It is also known as Central Line or CVAD or C-Line. A central venous catheter, also known as a central line, is long, soft, thin, hollow tube that is placed into a large vein that ends in a cavoatrial junction. Cavoatrial junction is nothing but the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium. A central line has multiple lumen that may be double or triple and they are named as proximal, distal and medial. Coming to the indications of central venous catheter, Central line is indicated in case of volume resuscitation, emergent venous access, nutritional support for example TPN administration, inotrophs and high risk medications and for chemotherapeutic drug administration, hemodialysis and CVP monitoring. Next, types of CVCs. They include tunnel central venous catheter, peripherally inserted central catheter also known as PIC and subcutaneous port or implantable port. Now, coming to the tunnel central venous catheter, it is a tube that tunnels under the skin of the chest, enters a large vein near the collarbone and threads inside the vein to sit above the right atrium of the heart. The other end of the catheter stays outside the body which contains three lumens. And here is the image for your reference. Next comes peripherally inserted central catheter. A pick line is a tube that is placed in the large vein in the inner elbow area. It is threaded through the veins to rest above the right atrium of the heart and the other end of the catheter stays outside the body which has multiple lumens. And here comes the image for your reference. Next comes subcutaneous port or implantable port. The port is placed completely under the skin on the right or left side of the chest. The catheter is placed into a large vein near the collarbone that rests above the right atrium of the heart. It is also called as port a cat or chemo port. In case of children, umbilical catheters are used. They are vascular catheters inserted through the umbilical artery or vein in a neonate. All umbilical catheters are called central lines or central venous catheters. Next comes insertion sites of central venous catheters. The sites include internal jugular vein that may be right or left internal jugular, subclavian vein that may be right or left subclavian vein, and femoral vein. In case of femoral line, the catheter tip rests on the inferior venae cava and in case of other lines, the catheter tip rests on superior venae cover. The sites for pick line includes basilic, brachial, cephalic or medial cubital veins. Now, let's see what is meant by CLAPSI. Central line associated bloodstream infection is a primary bloodstream infection that develops in a patient with the central venous catheter in place within the 48 hour period before onset of the bloodstream infection that is not related to infection at another site. So from the definition it is clear that the infection has occurred primarily because of central line within the 48 hour period and not because of any other bloodstream infection. Next comes Risk factors for developing CLAPSI First is lack of maximum sterile barriers for central venous catheter insertion. Next is site of insertion. In case of femoral line, there is more chances for developing central line associated bloodstream infection comparing to other sites. Next comes multiple central venous catheters or lumens and use of stopcocks. The more the number of ports, the more the chances for developing infection. Next is failure to remove unnecessary devices. Any IV lines connected to the central venous line should be removed immediately once the medications are completed. If they are left unremoved, there are chances for backflow and block, which further leads to infections. 
Next is immunocompromised patients and severe skin burns. In case of skin burns, the skin integrity is poor which leads to infections. Next is administration of total parental nutrition and chemo drugs. Next is prolonged length of stay of patients prior placing central venous lines. Next is colonization of catheter with the organisms. This may be because of improper handling of central venous lines. Next is infection elsewhere because of any secondary source. Next comes pathogenesis of Klebsi. Based on route of entry of bacteria, it is classified as extraluminal and intraluminal. First, extraluminal. In case of extraluminal, pathogens migrate along external surface of catheter from skin entry site. This often occurs within 7 days of central line insertion. In case of intraluminal, the hub gets contaminated and the organism migrates into the internal surface of catheter leading to intraluminal colonization. And this more commonly occurs after 7 days of insertion. This may lead to fibrin sheet formation in the catheter. Next is secondary bloodstream infection where bacteria from another source in the body infects the blood. Next is contaminated infusate where the pathogens are introduced from fluids infused through the catheter system. From this image, you can have a clear understanding about the pathogenesis of central and associated bloodstream infection. Next comes common pathogens of Klebsi. This includes Candida species, Enterococcus species, Coagulase negative Staphylococci, Klebsiella species, Enterobacter species, Acinetobacter, Pseudomonas species, Streptococcus species, etc. Now comes signs of a central line infection. Fever and chills, pain, redness and soreness around the central line, pus or bad smell around the central line side. Next comes criteria for Klebsi. Klebsi occurs when these three criteria exist and they are clinical signs of infection that is fever, rigors, altered mental status, hypotension, etc. Then no alternate source of bloodstream infection and positive blood culture from a peripheral line under central line. And even the central line tip culture also has the same organism that develops in the blood culture. Next comes management of Klebsi. This type of infection are treated with antibiotics. Sometimes the catheter needs to be removed and replaced. Now comes prevention of Klebsi, Klebsi bundle. Bundle is a set of evidence-based interventions related to disease process that when executed together results in better outcomes than when implemented individually. In prevention of C, we have insertion bundle and maintenance bundle. The key components in C bundle are hand hygiene, maintaining sterile barrier techniques, skin antisepsis with chlorhexidine, avoiding femoral access and removal of needless central venous catheters. Some of the evidence-based interventions that comes under insertion bundle are insert only if clinically indicated, Catheter with minimal number of ports needed should be selected. Hand hygiene before and after the procedure. Aseptic technique using all PPE for insertion and maintenance. Full body sterile drape used during insertion. Scrub with 2% chlorhexidine with alcohol for skin disinfection and allow it to dry for 30 seconds. Avoid femoral site in adults. Use sterile gauze or transparent dressing. Next, evidence-based intervention under maintenance bundle includes performing hand hygiene before doing any task on central line. Next, assessment of central venous catheter line and site documented in each shift. Assess the central line site for skin color changes like redness and oozing from the site and should be informed immediately to the physician. Next, as is for removal of unnecessary lines. Once the infusion gets completed, remove the lines immediately to prevent backflow and occlusion of central line. 
access central venous catheter only with sterile devices. Next is cover the central line lumens with the sterile sheet. Next, secure the catheter with transparent dressing. Replace dressings that are wet, soil or dislodged. Perform dressing with aseptic technique and use chlorhexidine. Flush the central line before and after administration of injections. Check the backflow from the central venous catheter before administering or before collecting any sample. Scrub the access port or hub with 70% isopropyl alcohol or 2% chlorhexidine before use. Change the IV line and pressure monitor line as per facility policy. These evidence-based interventions we have discussed so far have been gathered overall which may vary according to the institutional policies. Every institution has its own CLAPSI insertion and maintenance checklist. The only thing is the nurse should adhere to these interventions in order to prevent CLAPSI. So here you go with CLAPSI. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.